All right, Rolly. Yeah. Rolly, <laughs> where are you from originally? Where'd you grow up? I grew up in the San Fernando Valley. And tell me about your family growing up. Uh, my parents are still together to this day. Um, That's great. I'm Salvadorian and white. Um, they live in the valley. I take care of them. Um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, they're, they've always been together. Um, a lot of my friends growing up, all their parents were separated and stuff, so I'm really grateful that they're lucky. still together. Yeah. How would you describe your childhood? Wild. <laughs> very, very wild. Um, I was a wild child. Uh, snuck out, you know, tried drugs, went to parties, drank. Um, were things rough at home that, that forced you to do that or made you do that? Um, I would just say I'm an only child, and um, I just liked being out, and I just felt that um, my there, parents— There was no abuse going on at home or anything? No, no abuse, no. My dad and my mom were pretty were pretty well, like, for me—I mean, to me. Um, it's just that my dad—Latino um, fathers can be very, very strict. And I think when it came to my dad being super strict on me, it just made me want to do things. You rebelled. Rebel, yeah, and that's why my dad— um, sent me, sent me away. Um, I just couldn't stay home and I had a boyfriend at the time and he didn't approve of him and they got into a fight and next thing you know, I'm in jail <laughs> and, um, waiting to be sentenced to a foster care, uh, foster care group home type of situation. Mm. Um, I was there for uh, about a year until I graduated high school and then I went back home and then I still didn't get along with my, my dad. And then I decided that I wanted to be, go back into the foster care system and let the government pay for my housing, pay for, um, just pay, pay me like an allowance every month um, to survive. I did have a job. I did work at Smart and Final um, for a while. And uh, I was just moving to group home to group home from the government. Uh, the government paid for everything until I turned about Actually, no. Actually, actually, I got into a bunch of fights with my roommates, and I just didn't get along with them. And I ended up living with a friend, and then I met, and then I met a guy, and then we, and then I became with him, and then, and then that was pretty much it. I moved back with my parents, and then um, I started doing modeling um, full time. Uh, not full time. Sorry, sorry, not full time. I did modeling, and I had my job, and then. Um, <laughs> But yeah. when you say modeling, modeling means a million different things now. Okay, yes. What right. kind of modeling? So at first, at first it was just fashion and like boudoir, lingerie, stuff like that. <laughs> I did uh, get picked up by a and management. It led to... Which led to, yeah, which led to nude and stuff. <laughs> um, I, did, I did do Snapchat premium uh, back in the day and then uh, OnlyFans came out and I started in 2018. So I started that and I just... Um, it blew up. I like made so much money off of it. And I got like a management company um, in San Fran and they were like managing me for a while. And then they started to try to put me into porn. And I was very off about it because I'm I sorry, was- sorry, this came from an OnlyFans? Hmm? This came from an OnlyFans or- No, this came from my modeling agency that- Oh, I see. That booked me, that found me um, on Instagram. So it wasn't about OnlyFans, it was just about modeling. So they were helping me with modeling, but then they started putting me into porn. And at that time, I was just very um, nervous and I didn't want to do it because I was very young at the time. And I was worried about my parents and everything, so I just said no. So I ended up just going independently. I, um, I um, what is that word called? Um, I ended my contract. I ended my contract with them and I just started going independently. Um, into modeling, getting my own bookings, um, making my own money. Um, I still had a job though. I still had a regular job. But then, then having a regular job sucked because everybody at my job would know about my OnlyFans. So it started to become a problem. So I kept getting fired from everywhere because they kept finding my OnlyFans. And then um, I met a guy. There's such um, a stigma with sex work, isn't it? Huh? There's, there's such a stigma with sex work, isn't there? Yeah, I, the companies are just like, we don't want anybody affiliated with OnlyFans working for our companies. And honestly, I think that's fucked up because I'm not going to the workplace and having sex there. Like, I'm doing it on my own time. But, you know, a lot of my coworkers would bring it to my workplace and literally pull up videos of me sucking, like, or twerking naked or whatever and just 
and I would get fired, you know, and it was just, it was just crazy. I was, I was like, okay, this isn't working for me. I can't have a regular job <laughs> and do OnlyFans at the same time. Even though they're probably all watching it. Exactly. I'm like, there's such, there's such haters. They all, every time I left the job, I would get more subs and I'm sure it was because it was the <laughs> subbing to my stuff. <laughs> but, um, I met a guy and after all, after all that, I met a guy and he was like, you know what? Fuck this job. You should, you fuck, fuck working for anybody. You should do this fully like independently like full time like fuck a job and i was like okay well how do i do that and he was like all you got to do is just get an llc and i'll buy it for you you know like and i'll help you get to where you need to be but you can do this you can definitely do this you got this like you don't need a nine to five like you could do this and i was just like okay and i took a leap of faith i quit my job i was working for netflix for security um and Next thing you know, like I just started going, like getting a lot more bookings because I was more available for photographers and stuff. And um, I was just doing nude. Um, I'm starting to do nude now because a lot of people were trying to book me for nudes. <laughs> and uh, and then I started doing erotica, which erotica is playing with yourself, open spreads like open legs, toys, mm -hmm. anal stuff, stuff like that. Um, I was doing that a lot. Um, it's not, and not until I didn't really start doing boy, girl, girl, girl stuff until um, not only about like maybe like a year ago, two years ago, I started doing that. Um, but the thing was, is a lot of people didn't want it to be public. So I, it's all private. So I started doing a lot of boy, girl, private stuff for people because I got booked for um, shoots. They would be like BJ scenes or just regular like sex scenes. So you're, you're doing multiple types of sex work. Yeah, multiple you're, times. Your your modeling is, is that was that OnlyFans? Yeah, modeling was for so photographers would book me for a shoot, like a regular shoot, and they would use the photos for their portfolios, and then they would give me the photos, and then I would put them on my OnlyFans. So it was kind of like a win-win. Um, you know, a lot of photographers wanted to give me the photos because they wanted that accreditation and everything. So um, it was pretty cool that they were like willing to send me photos. And then you're also doing like escort type stuff. Or? Yeah, and I also was doing, you know, that type of stuff too because a lot of photographers are secret. I mean, not secret, they're undercover like I would say undercover tees, I guess. But um undercover what? Tees. What does that mean? Um that just means like they're I'm sorry, I'm as square as they get, so It's I, okay. I, <laughs> no. Um let me ha let me think of, think of how to describe it. Let's just say that they're guys that can't necessarily get Pussy, <laughs> that, and that makes sense. <laughs> so so they they're become, gonna pay for the pussy. They, they become photographers and uh... yeah. So technically, photographers. Not to say, I mean, I'm not saying I, I'm a good-looking girl. So I mean, I'm sure they're girl. seeing me play with my pussy and everything. Like they're gonna want more than just that. And so they so, hire you for a photo, for a photo shoot, and then they then they imply like, hey, like, would you be interested in? doing more than just playing with your pussy and stuff. And I'd be like, okay, like, what do you mean? And I'll be like, well, can I eat you out? Or can I put fingers up your pussy? Can I, you and, know. And is that for a camera or for themselves? Sometimes it's off camera. Sometimes it's on camera. Sometimes they just take it for their own self-pleasure. But as long as you're getting paid, you're cool with it. As long as I'm getting paid. That's all that matters to me. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I don't do any, I mean, unless it's my partner. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna charge my partner. But I mean, if it's somebody else, I mean, yeah, it, it only makes sense how, to how me. How does doing sex work? How, is doing how does it work for you, like psychologically, just emotionally? Good question. <laughs> um, some days it's fun, some days it's hard. Like some days it's like, God, I hate this guy, <laughs> you know? And then some days it's like, wow, like he's such a sweetheart, he's such a gentleman, you know, why is he even paying you know, like he, he could get a girl, you know, but some guys are just, they just don't know how to talk to women. And I'm here to be able to let them be themselves, to open up to me, to be able to be, yeah, just not be shy and scared and timid. Um, I'm a real good people person. I, I tend to get along with people, um, you know, cause I can kind of relate to them in a way. Um, but I mean, yeah, some days it's bad, some days it's good. Um, I've never really had a bad experience, um, like to where someone has tried to hurt me, but I've had experiences where guys try to pull off the condom and try to do some sneaky shit, and that scares me because, um, you know, you never know in this world, it's very important to get tested. It's very important to make sure 
who you're, you know, who you're gonna be having sex with is tested or if not, wear a condom, you know, cause that's, that's the way to go. But I mean, yeah, like I've only had, those are the only, that's only the, the scary situation is guys just trying to be sneaky and trying to like come inside me or, or pull off the condom, you know, so behind my back, of course, cause you know, when you're doing doggy, like I can't really see, but, but yeah, like, <laughs> Uh, that's happened to me before. Um, I've had like crazy. I have. I've had crazy situations with um, photographers that book me for really weird stuff. Like, I've had photographers book me for being a robot. Like, they wanted me to act like a robot, like a sex robot. Um, also, um, I'd been booked for diaper fetishes, so I had to act like a baby um, and wear diapers and act like Goo Goo Gaga and stuff. Um, I've also done stuff that's like. Um, uh, I forgot. I think it's called mash. Um, but what they do is um, you're tied up and they just throw pies at you and like throw um, dump slime that's like cake batter and stuff like that on you and you just gotta take it and shit. Do, so do you ever? Uh, do you ever uh -huh. I mean, do you ever feel degraded from doing this kind of stuff? You know, um, no. Honestly. I really look at it for the money. Right. I, I, I do this for my job. I, I look at it like my job. So whatever I'm doing for the person that's booking me, as long as they're happy, then I feel happy. How many years have you been doing it? Five years, like ever Five since, I was, you know, you know ever since I was 18, I'm you know 25. Job, but you know how jobs get. Sometimes after a while, you just can't take it anymore. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I don't I mean, want to have slime poured on me. Yes, I mean, I only did that twice. I, I don't want to do it again. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't no. Want to have sex with this 400 pound dude. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I guess so. But honestly, it's it's just it's just the thrill. I guess it's just like how I feel getting paid. I guess <laughs> that I don't really think about that. I don't know. It's just, but I get what you mean. Like sometimes I do feel like shitty, and sometimes I do feel like dirty. Like sometimes I feel like just awful but at the same time I, I think about the good guys that are out there that actually do treat me good and actually do um, pay me well and like you know I just I don't think about too much about quitting I just want to like keep going and just keep trying to find better people because I'm always trying to find you know um, more work for myself because I'm independent I don't have an agency, I don't have a company, like I'm just me, myself, and I. Yeah, just me. The, the sex so. workers I've interviewed a lot now, and, and the mm -hmm. ones that seem to look at this type of work as as if you're a therapist, mm -hmm. you actually like men, and, and, you, and you see that they have problems and needs, and yes. treat them like somebody who just has a problem that they, that they need attended mm -hmm. to, Yeah, seem to fare better psychologically, emotionally, from doing this kind of work. Mm -hmm. You know, if, yeah. if, you, if you look at it as like, these, these guys are nice. They just have a problem and they can't get women or, or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, and I mean, I've heard that there's sex worker places in Vegas where you can just, it's, you can go in there and there's rooms and stuff. And I saw it on Vice or something. So like, yeah, like there's women out there that really genuinely love men and they, you know, can, they can actually like, what's that word called? Crap. I'm trying to get the word out. <laughs> they can feel for them. Or I guess like, you know, like make them feel better and Empathize. not care Empath about whatever Empathize. the problems they have, if it's a disability or if it's a men mental disability or anything like that, like physical disability, like we're still going to show them that they're not special. Like they're still the same. I mean, not the same, we're, but we're all people. They're yeah, We're all, yeah, exactly. We're all people and men it and doesn't people, matter. Men and women both are just, yeah. Well, and I, I mean, I'm sure like a lot of my friends don't know how the fuck I do this, <laughs> but they praise me for it because it's like, yeah, like, I mean, I love sex and I, you know, I love men of all types. I mean, you and know. Has sex become transactional for you now? Yeah, I if mean. It, like if you met a guy that you liked and you guys started dating, would that even work? Or, or do you think, is there gotta be some money? Okay, is if it it's a guy I like, then um, I tell him, I mean, if it's a guy I like, then no, I mean, it's not transactional. Um, I feel like it's, it's gonna, be genuine, but um, but telling them like you know like hey like um, this is what I do and stuff like that sometimes like gets to them, but they understand that that 
you know, that's what I do for a living, like modeling and doing shoots and everything like that. That's part of and traveling and everything. So it's, you know, they're pretty understandable. But um, I, I would think that after after years of doing this, where mm -hmm. every time you have sex, you're getting paid, you're getting paid, you're getting paid. Every time you get mm -hmm. naked, you're getting paid. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden that stops. Mm. For one person. <laughs> you're you're going to be like, wait, something's missing here. <sighs> yeah. But I, but I think in my head that I can't always do transactional things because then I won't really actually feel what the feeling of love is. And like, I can't, so that's why I have to different, differentiate transactional and actual like love and genuine like sex, <laughs> not just transactional sex. So like, yeah, I, I think about that all the time. Like, you know, maybe I should take a break. Maybe I should just chill, but yeah, it's good I for mean, you to hang on to that. Yeah. Yeah. That thought because mm -hmm. it becomes just, you're just a hustler then. Yeah, no, exactly. And like, yeah, sometimes I do need to take a break because mentally and physically it does get to me. But at the same time, like I look at the times like, like, hey, I just bought my dad a flat screen TV. Hey, I bought my mom a new rocking chair, $600, $600, like $800. Like I'm providing and that makes me feel good. So you're, and you're helping your family. I'm helping my family for sure. And being an only child, it's, it's a big responsibility for me and like, and I just want to give back to my parents as much as I can because of how hard I, all the stuff I put them through, you know? Um, <laughs> I don't even know why I'm getting emotional. No, that's, that's really nice of you. It's very sweet of you to do that. Yeah. Do they, do they know what you do for work? No, not at all. Oh God. <laughs> They know I'm a model. They know I model. They know I travel and model. They get so scared and they're so worried for me. But I tell them all the time that I'm, ah, fuck. <laughs> it's okay. You have a heart. God damn it. Why am I going to be emotional? Thank you. you Is that why you have tissues on the side? It's a good thing for oh, God. that you can hold on to your, your soul and your heart, <laughs> even despite this work you do. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's hard not to be able to tell them because my dad is so strict and all my life I've just been scared to tell them because because I'm just afraid, you know? I think any person would be afraid to tell their parents what they do and it's not the best career. <laughs> but, um, but I'm sure, like, buying them whatever they want is, like, enough for them and they they just want me to be safe. And I am safe. I am always safe. I get tested once a month and I make sure whoever I do have sex with personally, not transactionally, that's a text tested too. And, you know, I just try to be safe and everything. But, um, but yeah, I, I like that I'm able to provide for myself, provide for my friends too. I mean, my friends and everything, like I, my family and everything, like I, it's just a, a blessing. It is a blessing. And I appreciate all the men in my life that have get put me to this level, That's I, great. I guess. It's yeah. great that you've been able to turn it into something positive, yeah. Successful. Successful, yes. You're not yes. wasting it on on drugs or a pimp or something like that. No, no, definitely <laughs> not a pimp. No. What, what, what have you learned about men from, um, doing, from this? What have, I, what have I learned from men? Hmm. Not from men, but about men. That they can be sensitive to that they're not all aggressive, that they can be sensitive and be nice and sweet and... Um, a lot of men are just lonely. And they're, yeah, a lot of men are just lonely and they just don't... They can't meet a girl like you. Yeah, and <laughs> not least, even or, or touch least, me. Or, <laughs> or, yeah. or at least they think they can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, no, like, yeah. I guess like the feeling of um, a guy that hasn't, you know, been in the presence of me and treat me like the way I want to be treated, and I don't even know this person, you know? I just met this person and they just treat me so much differently and it's just crazy, you know, the feeling that I get when they, when I meet them and, you know, they're a really good guy and everything. They're not, you know, they're not so like mean, I guess. Yeah, d d <laughs> does doing this work build up your self-esteem? Yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah, it definitely no, it does. Could, <laughs> it, could, it could also degrade it when you're getting poured slime on you and stuff like that. Yeah. I guess the slime, yeah, the slime, yeah, it's, it's, it, the pie, the, the pies, the <laughs> slapping the pies in my face was very, was very, I, I wanted to give up at that moment. That was a turn on for some, somebody? Yeah, turn on for, for people, yeah. Um, and what was crazy was me and my friend, me and my friend both were tied like this, getting eight, I think it was ten or eight, eight pies. It, 
you know, like the tin thing with the whipped cream and just sm like he held our heads and just did that to us eight times. And then we had to get on the floor tied up blind. Like we couldn't see because there was whipped cream all over our eyes and just like wrestle. And it was cr I we couldn't see. So we ended up headbutting each other. <laughs> And we, I was just so done after that shoot. I was like, can we just, can we just wash up? <laughs> and it was just so crazy. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, hey, the guy kidding. paid us like six to 800, I think. So for like an hour. That's so all? I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, hey, fuck it. Let's do it. You know, <laughs> like sometimes shoots are just worth it. Cause it's pay, like, hey, I'm making pay, 800. I would pay you five grand just to shut up about it. And never, <laughs> make sure nobody yeah. ever found out. Yeah. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but do you... Like a lot, of the, a lot of the guys that hire you are married, I assume? Yeah, uh, I would say half. I would say half. Um, half of the wives know and half of them don't. Mm. <laughs> um, a lot of them sneak and hide and stuff and, you know, but um, I always, I never really get, a, I never, I've never gotten an angry phone call <laughs> from any wives. <laughs> and so I'm sure that they do very much, they make sure that it doesn't get out. A lot of it's private. That's why... You know, a lot of the married men don't want to post stuff like that, so how, they just how, do how it for private. How does this affect your karma? Huh? How does how, do you do you believe in karma? Do I believe in karma? Hell yeah! Every yeah. time I see a homeless person, I try to give them money. But what, just... what about like the fact that you're sleeping with somebody's husband? Okay. Um. Yeah. I guess so. I didn't think about that till you said that. Um. No, but, but like, <laughs> I, I, I'm not judging anybody. I'm not pointing. No, a no, I know, but because, do, but I think like, about I could, that. I could just as easily blame the wife for making the man search for somebody like you. Mm. I'm mm -hmm. not blaming you at all, mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. husband, or the wife. I'm just saying. Yeah. There's there's three people involved, and yeah, probably all three are equally to blame. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but see, I I look at you know I look at me like as what they say like I guess. A mistress, I guess, <laughs> but but I mean, like you know, that I have nothing to do with what they're go what they got going on. That's their business, you know. But as far as I know, I'm not emotionally involved, or I'm not getting attached to that person. I'm just there for a job, and I do my job, and I get out of there. I try to get it out of there earlier than than I'm supposed to, which usually ends up happening. I always get the job done like that, and then I leave. But once the guy's done, he's done. Yeah, once he's done, he's done. Ain't no, ain't no second. Ain't no, yeah. It's just once he's done, he's done. But yeah, no. I mean, it's been a, it's been a crazy life. I mean, living this life and doing this all full time. It's just made me. It's just made me more. I guess it makes me more like love myself more. I guess because I'm just like, when I was working a job, I was just so angry. I was just so mad all the are you, time. Are you less angry now? I'm less angry now, yeah. That's a lot right. of the guys I see um, are very nice to me and they treat me really well. So like, I'm not, I haven't, I'm not really angry. But a lot of these guys just want a, a female companion? A female than, companion. Right? Yeah. Do some guys just mm -hmm. hang out with you and not have sex? No, it really doesn't <laughs> no. happen. No, that really doesn't a lot, happen. A lot, of the sex workers, a lot of the sex workers tell me that. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how true that is. No, I don't being. think so. I think they're lying. <laughs> they, <laughs> that's their fantasy. Yeah, that's their fantasy. <laughs> oh, he's asking me what's my fantasy? No, that, that's, oh. that, that's the girls' oh, yeah, fantasy yeah, yeah. That, that guys are just hiring them for their charming personalities. No, I don't think so. Because your personality is very nice, but yeah. But still, you're, you're a sexy girl. Thank you. So you're going to get... <laughs> right, right. To do all kinds of stuff. Right, right, right. Oh God, I cannot believe I got emotional right there. God, Where do you want to be in five years? Where do I want to be in five years? Definitely want to have my own house. I literally want to like. Are you saving money? Yeah, I'm saving up. I'm saving up. Um, I just want to have my own place. I want to definitely get a new car. Do you pay taxes? Do I pay taxes? I think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't even know. I have a tax lady for that. I sent all my shit to my tax so lady. So you're probably paying taxes. Oh, okay. Then, you're, yeah. What do you tell her you do for a living? Uh, modeling. There you go. Yeah, modeling. She's, um, she doesn't she's ask any cool. questions. No, she doesn't ask any questions. She just tells me, send me the numbers. And I say, all my, right. My, my accountant yeah. laughed his ass off when I told him pimps don't give uh, receipts. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> He's like, you don't, you, don't have, you, don't have, you don't have invoices, uh, receipts, you know. For no. any of this stuff, and I'm like, no, the pimps no. don't give receipts. Pimps don't give receipts. No, there's no, there's no paper trail. Yeah, yeah. It's just cash out of my pocket. 
Mm, nice. Yeah, um, I have LLC. All my shits, all my digital. Um, sorry, what is my the third party apps like Cash App? All that stuff is all under my business and everything. So, yeah. So I try. I'm trying. I mean, yeah, I'm trying to be legit in everything. So, but yeah, I mean. And you've, you've been in love well. before. I'm sorry. You've but, been in love before. Yeah, I've been in love before. I guess like, yeah, maybe once or twice. You're young. Yeah, I'm young. I'm young. Love yeah. is love is challenging. It is. It's really hard to find somebody out here, like in this like time of eight, like in this year, like because of how everything is. A lot of people are, you know, more into like poly or like you know. <laughs> it's like it's it's, a, it's it's a circus out there. <laughs> And then yeah. on top of it, you've got these social media yeah. apps that are just like they're they're divorce machines, basically. Is, is, yeah. Is, no, it's, it's yeah. It's, somebody said on my channel. Oh, really? They're divorce machines? Oh God. <laughs> no, I haven't been on a dating app. I've never had to get on a dating app at all. I literally no, not, not meet even the dating men. Apps. I'm just talking oh. about Instagram or, oh, Instagram. or Facebook. Oh, okay, okay. That you meant like Tinder or something like that. No, no, no. I'm just talking oh, about okay. just this, the information that you're posting is like what the fuck. Oh. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't really need dating apps. I just go outside and just walk. Just walk outside and... Yeah. How, how, do, how do you find... How do you get business? Um, Other... I use a lot of websites. Um, I use, like, um, like FetLife and... Do you, do you get propositioned on the street, too? Yeah, I mean, sometimes... I mean, do, you, do you dress in a way that is very provocative and no i do not walk on fig if that's what you're no no no, no. <laughs> no, I, know, I know you don't do that no 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 i know i'm just making a joke but no i i you know i when i okay when i'm traveling um that's when i get the most attention is when i'm traveling um um but yeah like i don't really i mean i just wear normal clothes and i get i get hit on all the time <laughs> but yeah i mean traveling is is where i get most of um most of my work too. It's, it's just inter interesting to see you know i interview, interview so many females mm -hmm. and it seems like so many of them are doing some form of sex work mm -hmm. yeah I mean, you know granted, I mean, you got I'm, to. I mean, granted i'm looking for some of that too but mm -hmm. but even still it's it seems like it's just it's such a commodity in our society mm -hmm. of a woman's attractiveness mm -hmm. and it just seems a shame that you guys are limited mm -hmm. legally by what you can do. Mm, yeah. I mean, you never know. Then they might make it legal. <laughs> they should. They should. I mean, they say sex work is the the longest job <laughs> there was the been. The oldest profession. The oldest profession. That's what they said. Yeah. Sex work has been around for a while now. <laughs> but, yeah. It's just, it doesn't seem fair that. That we get hated on? Yeah. First off, you get so much judgment for it. Judgment, yeah. And then it's not even legal. Uh, yeah. And, you know, if you're doing it, you just, you get ostracized. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then fuck it'll them follow though. you for the rest of oh, the stigma connected with it is terrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's going to follow you for the rest of your life now. <laughs> yeah, somebody's going to have it on some website somewhere. Right. Yeah. I know. Once it's on the internet, it's public. I mean, anybody could see it. Yeah. 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 And really, what what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Um, to not let anyone determine like your future and stuff like that like never give up you know you got this like I always tell myself you got this you don't gotta be nervous or anything like you know like you know and don't let anyone you know like don't let anyone tell you different you know like make sure that you stand your ground and you you know stand for what what's right for you you yeah. know and not let anyone try to take that away from you um because I've had I mean, I was bullied when I was young. I was not, I did not look like this. I was very big and chubby, braces. Like I, I, I'm sure a lot of my high school, a lot of my high school, uh, fr not friends, but a lot of people from my high school that bullied me and made fun of me are now DMing me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just so funny because I'm like, wait a minute, didn't you, didn't you make fun of me when I was in high school and you literally talked crap about me and all that stuff? And they're like, yeah, but that was back then. I'm like, nah, it's cool. Like, I'm not, I don't got time for you. What the fuck? <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's just crazy to think that, um, yeah, a lot of my high school people, high school, like, people will hit me up and stuff like that. So it's just, yeah, it does boggle my mind. Cause I'm also like, and even from the group homes, a lot of the friends, a lot of my friends from the group homes, 
it it it's it makes me feel sad but good because a lot of them didn't go the right path. A lot of them went down drugs, a lot of them went back to jail, a lot of them didn't make it. They died, you know, and like they passed away and it just makes me feel good that everything that I went through with the group homes and going to jail and you know, getting into situations that I shouldn't have been in um, have made me who I am today. And that's made me like grateful, you know, even though I had to go through so much shit to be here. But I mean, hey, like it's just, I have to be grateful that, you know, I'm alive, I'm healthy, there's nothing wrong with me, you know, and everything is good. Um, and I'm making money for myself and that's, that's all that, that's all I really care about is that I'm able to provide and I'm able to find peace and be able to do things I want to do, like travel and go places and buy my parents anything they want and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a good feeling, even though, yeah, I came with a lot, a lot of pain for sure. Yeah, but you seem to have your heart and soul in the right place too. Yeah, yeah. I try, you know, I try. I have a little, I could be a little angry. I could be a little, uh, my dad said I can have a little temper. And I think that's from dealing with all the shit I deal with, but I dealt with, but um, I try to work on it, you know? Um, I try not to get pissed off at people. I try to keep my, keep my calm, my husa. I try to be calm and stuff, but yeah, it's just sometimes I could just go off on people. And my friend, my business partner, the girl I work with, um, she'll be like, go, she'll, if I get, if I go hard, if I go off on a photographer, she's like, go outside, I'm, I gotta fix this. Cause you just fucked this all up. I gotta fix, I'm like, I'd be so mad. I'd be like pacing back and forth. Like, oh my God, like, you know, this guy's trying to fuck us over and not pay us and da da da. And she'll like, and then my girlfriend will go in and, and her little sweet ass fix everything and get us paid. And I'll just be like, fuck. Cause, Sometimes I just fuck things up because of my anger. And I'd have to realize that, you know, um, I have to calm down and have to breathe and stuff. Um, but I've, I've been better at it. I've but you been, can't let I've people walk over better. you either. Huh? You can't let people walk all over you. Yeah, no, that's why I always tell my friend, like these men are trying to get over on us. And it's our job to put our foot down and tell them no this is how it's gonna go. You're not gonna bait and, we call it bait and switch. They they bait us to make it seem like, okay, like this is how it's gonna be. And then when we get there, then they switch up. Then they wanna say, oh no, we're gonna do this, or oh, we're gonna do that. And it's like, no, 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 no. This is how, this is what you said, this is how we're gonna do it. Not you switching it up later I think, I think it's stuff. important for a woman, especially an attractive woman like yourself to mm -hmm. know, that, to understand that you have a commodity that's more valuable than what they're giving. Exactly. Yeah. No, like they need us. We don't need them. <laughs> that's, that's what we always say. They need us. So if we want to charge them extra this, extra that, they're going to pay that because they want us, you know, and and usually 100 percent of the time they do. And if you if you say no, I'm walking away. Yeah, they're they, going to want you even more. They're going to want me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's like a, it's a, kind of like a tit for tat. Like, you know, like you got to kind of it's a negotiation. I mean, our negotiation is is on point. That's what I would say that for sure. And negotiation is on point. Um, me and my girlfriend, we travel and, you know, we've been traveling. Well, she's been traveling longer than me, but I've been traveling with her for like two, three years now. Um, and yeah, uh, she's she's been in the game more than me um, traveling wise. So, traveling for what purpose? Uh, modeling, same thing. Hmm. Yeah, modeling. Um, so she's just um, been kind of like my mentor because um, she's a little bit older than me. Um, so she's just been showing me like the traveling life and how it could be scary. Um, it could be, you know, when you're traveling, um, you know, there's, you always have to think about the weather conditions. You gotta think about hotel expenses. You gotta think about flakes. Cause like sometimes we'll go to a state and everybody flaked on us and then we're just stuck. Like we don't have, we didn't make any profit. And then we end up just losing money because we spend money on all the, the flight, the rental, the hotels, all that stuff. All that stuff goes into our, our like <laughs> yeah. out of our pockets, not their pockets. A lot so. of people don't understand the expenses in. Yeah, and everything. like they get mad at us for asking them for deposits. And I'm really like looking at them like, dude, like we're traveling from, you're traveling from, a, you know, across the states to come, to come to your state. Like, you know, you can't show us a little like, 
confirmation or like solidifying your spot and some photographers will send us deposits and some photographers just won't they just say oh i'll be there and then the day of they don't show up and then we're just like where are you and then they just don't they don't send a cancellation fee they just ghost us do, and do, do you ever long for a career that might be a little more respectable and you won't have those kind of problems um yeah i mean like um, being a nurse or being a you know, I tried yeah. that. I tried that. It didn't work out. I don't speak Spanish, so <laughs> I didn't get that job. I literally went to vocational college to do medical office, which was like a billing, mm -hmm. coding, paperwork, and I did eight months of that, and then I transitioned into, a, I guess, a, a urgent care office, and they didn't – it was a – oh, crap, what's it called? An inter internship, externship or whatever. And they didn't hire me because I didn't speak fucking Spanish. So I was like, wow. But no, I mean, I, as far it goes, like maybe after if I wanted to transition into something else, I probably would do real estate. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people and I'm very good. Pe like, I'm just a very good people person, I would say. Like, I am people pl I'm a people pleaser, too. Like, I just feel like I'm, I'm I talk really well with people. And um, I think that uh, real estate would probably be the best best fit for me um, later on. Cause my dad always asked me, he's like, what are you gonna do when you get older? Are you, he always jokes around. He always says, are you gonna be, are you gonna, um, he said, are you gonna be those, those old ladies with the prescriptions and the pamphlets posing? And I was like, no, I think I'll do something else. And he was like, okay. Cause he's like, I, I don't think, you know, modeling is good, but like, you need to like think of something serious. And I was like, yeah, of course, of course I will. But right now I'm having the time of my life. I never felt any better to just be my own boss, like make my own schedule, like have my own money, not have to pay anybody. Like, it's just a, the best feeling, like, you know, just being able to do what I want to do and when I want to do it, you know, and not have to, you know, oh, you're late. I'm going to write you up. Like, what? No. <laughs> I'm a very hard worker, too, so I don't like showing up late. I like to be on time. I like to be prepared. I like to be reliable. You know, I a lot of the models in this world are not reliable. <laughs> They're very not reliable. So it just sucks when like photographers are not reliable with me because I'll be reliable. I'm like, oh my God, like, yeah. So the modeling world can be tough. It really is. And you have to really be driven. You have to really put yourself out there. No one's gonna put them, no one's gonna put your cast, or not casting, but no one's gonna put your resume or whatever in for you. You have to do it yourself. You have to, do the work and you know and that's that's what i do every day i i i um reply sorry reply to casting calls i try to find other like platforms to i even use you know my own platforms to say hey i'm t i'm going on tour this is my tour dates and stuff like that sometimes i'll get people on instagram i get a lot of people on twitter um some people on snapchat but um but yeah so it's just you got to just be motivated to, you know, work for yourself because nobody else is going to work for you but you, but you, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're doing well. I'm glad you're happy. Thank you. And safe. Yeah. yeah, I try to be. I try to be safe. All right, Roly. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Oh, okay. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs>